Hello everyone, it's Old Guardian here. In this video, I will talk about the best decks to climb to Legend in Hearthstone now after the third balance patch of Ashes of Outland. So, Shaman was buffed, Paladin was buffed, then there were nerfs to Hunters, Demon Hunters, Warriors. How did all of that affect the meta and what are the top decks right now? Unsurprisingly, neither Paladin nor Shaman has risen to be a top deck so far. Of course the classes have a lot of catching up to do and the buffs did seem to help them a little bit so maybe something will show up in the next weeks. In the meanwhile some more aggressive decks got a little bit weaker so the meta has at least temporarily slowed down a little bit and there's more greed around. And that has also caused some of the decks that are good against slow decks to rise up in ranks. But I expect this to be a temporary phenomenon as the aggressive decks will regroup and recover. We're already seeing signs of that with Demon Hunter. So I expect that some of these decks that are good at countering greed decks will fall back down within the next weeks. But right now they can be good options to climb to Legend. And the first one of those coming in at number 8 on my top best decks to climb to Legend list is Bomb Warrior. Bomb Warrior has been a viable warrior archetype all along, but it has been a little bit weaker than its other brethren because it's been worse at defending against aggression and then it, while it has been good at punishing greedy decks, that has not been part of the meta really. But now its ability to punish decks like Mage and Rogue are making it much more viable. It has a big weakness against Priest, but given the lack of truly aggressive decks at the moment, Bomb Warrior has been performing fairly well. Another deck that has really loved a slower meta is Quest Warlock. Quest Warlock has finally become somewhat playable. Its main weakness is Demon Hunter and other decks that can just kill it. But if there's our slow decks, then Quest Warlock, with its ability to pull off OTKs, great against something like Priest, for example, an overall strong option to punish all sorts of slow decks. These sorts of lists that have a lot of burn, double rain of fire in this one, double soul fire in this one. These seem to be performing the best out of the quest warlock archetype because they can truly punish the greedy decks. Coming in at number 6 is Highlander Mage. Highlander Mage has been playable throughout the expansion but never really reached the top ranks. But now with some of those more aggressive decks seeing less play, especially many of the faster hunted decks seeing less play, except for Highlander Hunter which is very, very common, Highlander Mage has a little bit more room to shine. It still loses horribly against Hunter, but it has a lot of tools to scam out wins against most of the other decks in the meta. And coming in at number 5 is yet another deck that benefits from aggression being a little bit more muted, which is Spell Druid. Spell Druid can fight against the greedier decks, Spell Druid can fight against lots of mid-range decks, Spell Druid is good against Highlander Hunter, which is a major upside for the current meta. There are also various Maligos Druid builds around, but Maligos doesn't seem to be performing that well. The way that those Druid decks win is still largely based on Ysera Unleashed, and Spell Druid is just a more consistent variant of that team. Enrage Warrior was widely touted as the best deck in the game before the nerfs, but the nerfs hit it harder than I expected, to be honest. Bloodstone Mercenary losing those stats and going from 3-3 to 2-2, so your early snowballs are much weaker, turned out to greatly affect the deck. I had expected a smaller effect, because Bloodstone Mercenary is still great with Gorkrons for those combo finishers, but turns out that Warrior was knocked down a notch. It's still a great deck. This is Meaty's list, you can find a video of this list on this YouTube channel as well. And it's still doing fine. It has this Grom, Deathwing, Captain Greenskin tools to really challenge greedy and value-oriented decks. So it is the least vulnerable to stuff like Priest out of its archetype. Coming in at the number 3 is Galagrand Rogue. Galagrand Rogue, before the nerfs, it was Galagrand Secret Rogue was like percentage point, two percentage points above the other Galagrand Rogue variants, but now that the secret version was slightly nerfed, it fell down just a little bit, and now they're essentially neck and neck. You can play with secret still if you like, that's perfectly fine. The secret rogue list is fairly well tuned, it's quite a ready package, or you can also play without the secrets, and the versions without the secrets are currently already challenging the secret rogue in win rate, and the lists are not fully finalized yet. I'm not sure if this is the correct approach, the Greyheart Surge stealth approach, maybe 
non-stilt approach could also work. There's a video of a non-stilt Calacon Rook on my channel, by the way. So because these are currently performing quite evenly, I expect that the non-secret version can be tuned to be even better and will overtake the secret variant at some point. Be that as it may, both variants are extremely strong decks that you can play to legend. Coming in at number two is... wait... why is this deck here? It's Tempo Demon Hunter. You just can't get rid of Tempo Demon Hunter. Even the Priestess builds still seem to be okay. But right now it looks like this Warglaive build that doesn't run Priestess has inched out slightly ahead of the Priestess variant. And while people were initially cutting Crimson Sigil Runners, replacing them with stuff like Guardian Orc Mercants, or then some 2 drops or 3 drops, it actually looks like Crimson Sigil Runner might still have a place in the deck, because quite a few decks that have now been performing at the best level do include the card. So what can I say? Demon Huntering, business as usual. And then the current best deck in the game. I initially predicted that Enrage Warrior would keep its place as number one, Highlander Hunter would come in as number two, but Warrior took a bit more of a hit than I thought, and Highlander Hunter it is. Highlander Hunter, it seems that no matter how you build the deck, it's just so good. There are tons of variants differing by a few cards, and all of them seem to be winning just games everywhere, so. How do you even tell what is the best Highlander Hunter list? Right now there is not enough data to really tell, but this is one of the most played Highlander Hunter lists and it has very steady, solid performance. So when in doubt, just go with something that has a big sample size and that is proven to be good. There might be ways to improve this deck even further, and we'll see in the coming weeks because Highlander Hunter being at the top of the pyramid right now means that it's going to see a lot of experimentation, it's going to see a lot of play and the list will be fine-tuned. Overall the effects of the balance patch were a little bit surprising maybe. There's a lot of movement in the meta, but I expect that the best decks to play will look quite a bit different within the next two weeks. The top archetypes, I think they will probably remain the same. There will be some fine-tuning in the exact builds. And then some of those decks that are currently punishing the greed will probably fall down a notch once all the decks are fine-tuned. And it's more difficult to find avenues to punish other decks. Anyway, if you want to climb the legend in May, these are some of the best decks to use. And we'll see in early June what the situation is going to look like then, and I expect a couple of changes will come by then. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please click the like button and subscribe to my channel for more.